Have you ever wanted to expand your Procreate brush library and learn how to create your own custom brushes? Hi, I'm Lauren from Envato Tuts Plus and in this video course I'll show you how to install new brush packs, create custom brushes and stamps and show examples of how these brushes can be used. In this video I will be using resources from Envato Elements which is a huge library of downloadable files including textures, fonts and Procreate brushes to suit all of your creative needs. There is no locking contract and you can cancel at any time. Firstly, what is Procreate? Procreate is an iPad application for digital painting. It is the most advanced drawing app that has ever been designed for a mobile device. Procreate can be used not only for digitalized looking artworks, but also to mimic traditional brushes and techniques. To use Procreate, you will need an iPad, an Apple Pencil, and the app installed on your device. Next, we are going to go through the process of installing a Procreate brush from Envato Elements. Type in Procreate brushes in the search bar to view the whole selection. You can then scroll through and find a pack that you'd like to download. Select that pack and then hit the download button in the top right corner to save the file to your device. You can then open up the files application, click on the download to unzip the file and select the Procreate brush file to download it automatically into your app. Select the brush menu and you should see the newly downloaded pack at the top of the list. You can now have fun with your new brushes. You can also download Photoshop brushes into your Procreate app but the process is a little different. You can begin by typing Photoshop brushes into the search bar and then choosing the pack that you'd like to download. As with before, select the pack and hit the download button in the top right corner. You'll want to unzip the file as with before, but this time head to Procreate and press the plus icon in the top right of the brush library. Then find your file and then select it to import it into your brush library. As with before, this will have created a new brush folder at the top of your library and now you can have fun with your brushes. What are traditional art brushes in Procreate? This style of brush mimics traditional art mediums in both shape and texture. For example, the old ink brushes shown on the screen mimic traditional inking techniques. You can find a variety of different brush packs that mimic different traditional mediums in the Envato Elements library. By using these brushes in Procreate, you can achieve the traditional look you're after while saving yourself a lot of time. These stipple brushes are a great example of this. Now let's create some brushes of our own. First, we're going to look at how to make a chalk brush. I'm going to begin by creating a new folder in the brush library that will house all of the brushes I'm going to be creating today. Then I'm going to hit the plus icon in the top right corner. First, I'm going to head to the shape option on the menu. I want to change the shape of the brush, so I'm going to hit import to add my own custom shape. Here you can add your own files, but I'm going to head to the source library because Procreate already has a great selection of shapes to use for brushes. I selected this shape for its texture and angled look. I'm then going to hit done and that shape should now apply to the brush. I'm then going to head to the grain section and again press import. I want to import my own file this time so I'm going to head back to elements. I'm going to select photos on the menu because I want to look for a texture for the grain. I'm then going to search for a chalk texture in the search bar. You can also download pre-made texture packs on Envato Elements but for this tutorial I'm just going to find a photograph. Once I've found one I like I'm going to hit the red download button. I'm then going to head back to Procreate, select import and import a file. I then find my file and import it. Procreate will automatically convert this to black and white. I then want to make a repeating pattern so I select the auto repeat button and adjust the scale of the grain to my preferences. You need to make a seamless pattern for the grain of your brush, otherwise you might find that you have harsh edges when colouring. The larger the grain scale, the larger the texture will appear on your brush. Once you're happy, you can press done. We're now going to look at editing some of the other settings for the brush. First I turn the spacing setting down to zero, which means that the shapes will merge into one solid line. 
The higher the setting is, the further apart your shapes will appear. You can test out your brush on the drawing pad on the right and press clear drawing pad to start again. On the stabilization menu, I'm going to increase the streamline to maximum. This will smooth out any wobbles or shakes in your line, which is really great for line art brushes, but less great for coloring brushes, so you'll want to adjust it accordingly. Next, I'm going to drag the pressure taper sliders inwards. This extends the taper at the beginning and end of the brush strokes for a more elegant line. The size slider will determine how severe your taper will transition from thick to thin. I'm going to increase mine to almost full. Next, I'm going to adjust the tip slider. On lower settings, this will make the brush behave as if you are using a pen with a very fine tip. On higher settings, it will mimic a chunkier, thick tip. I'm setting mine at 37%. In the touch taper section of this page, you can also edit the settings for strokes drawn with a fingertip. The settings work the same as those with the brush. Next, I'm going to move on to the shape menu. Here, you can adjust the behavior of the shape. I'm going to decrease the count jitter slider which varies the number of times the stamp will apply at a point. For this brush I'm going to leave the rest of these settings the same. I'm then going to switch to the grain menu which affects the texture of the brush. When using the drawing pad you can see how the texture has been applied to the shape of the brush when we added the file as the source. The scale slider adjusts the size of the grain texture inside the shape. I'm going to increase this slightly. There are a variety of other settings that can change the behaviour of the grain. For this brush, I'm going to leave the rest of them as they are. Next, I'm going to select the rendering menu. This menu changes the way strokes and colours behave on your brush and also when they interact with the canvas. I'm going to select intense blending, which gives a thicker appearance to the brush, whereas a light glaze would give a more washed down, diluted appearance. The wet mix menu controls how your brush will interact with colour. I'm going to decrease the pull and disable the charge. Enabling the setting allows you to lay a paint on the canvas. The next menu is for colour dynamics. I'm going to leave this one for this particular brush. The next menu is called dynamics, which sets your brush to make dynamic changes based on how quickly you make strokes. I'm going to increase the jitter size, which alters the size of the shape stamp at random points throughout the stroke. Next is the apple pencil menu, which makes adjustments to how the apple pencil interacts with your brush. By increasing the size slider, I can adjust how large or small the tip of my brush becomes under varying pressure. The bleed setting adjusts how much the brush bleeds around the edges into the canvas under varying pressure. I've increased this to a tiny percentage. The tilt settings affect how the Apple Pencil responds to being angled on the canvas. Increasing the gradation creates a softening effect when shading with a brush on an angle. I also slightly increase the bleed setting. The final menu we're going to look at is the Properties menu. Here you can adjust how the brush previews in the brush library and how it behaves within the Procreate interface. Moving the smudge slider will adjust how much a brush smudges when set as the smudge tool. The brush behaviour settings control the upper and lower limits of the size and opacity sliders in the Procreate sidebar. Here you can control the maximum and minimum size of your brushes. For this chalk brush, I'm going to set the maximum size to max and the minimum size to none. This gives me full control of the size of my brush. And now we are done. You can test out your brush on your canvas. One of my favorite ways to use chalk brushes is for drawing hair. I really like the soft, loose and textured look that you can create. This brush works really well for adding these loose strands outside the edges of the hair since it fades towards the tip, which gives a really soft and loose appearance. To make the most of these settings, I vary the pressure of my brush pressing down hardest at the beginning of the line and lessening the pressure towards the end of the line. Here is the final result. When I zoom in on the drawing, you can see the texture that the chalk brush has created and also how the opacity fades out towards the ends of the lines. For our next brush, we're going to look at how to make an ink liner brush. I'm going to create a new brush and then head straight to the shape menu. As with the last brush, I'm going to hit import and head straight to the source library. For this brush, I want a round shape with textured edges. Once that's selected, I'm going to hit done and then head straight to the grain menu. Once again, I want to import a file, so I'm going to head on to Envato Elements 
and this time look for a paint splatter texture. This will help us create a really grainy look to the brush. I'm going to select this texture because it has a lot of splatters that really stand out against the background. I'm going to import that file and now I need to invert the colours of this image. This is because Procreate will cut out the black of an image, so I want to invert the colours so that the grains become black. I can do this by tapping the image with two fingers. The colours have now been inverted. Now like before, I can hit Auto Repeat to make a repeating pattern with this image. I want the grains to be quite small, so I'm going to leave that as it is and hit Done to create the texture. I can now start editing the rest of the brush setting. I start by turning the spacing to zero and increasing the jitter to 25%. On the stabilisation menu, I'm going to increase the streamline pressure to 20%. I'm also going to increase the stabilisation amount to 30%. Next, I'm going to select the taper menu. I'm going to begin by pulling in the pressure taper at the ends. I'm also going to increase the size to maximum and the opacity to maximum. I'm going to pull up the tip slider to make the brush blunter at the end. I'm then going to adjust these settings for the touch taper. As with before, I'm going to pull the size and opacity to maximum. Now it's time to move on to the shape menu. I set the rotation slider to 28%. This slider adjusts the rotation of your shape in relation to the direction of your stroke. I'm going to set the randomize switch to on. This randomizes the rotation of the shape when the stroke begins. This has the effect of making each stroke different to the one before it. Next I'm switching to the grain menu. First I'm increasing the scale ever so slightly and then I'm setting the grain filtering to no filtering which means that the edges will not be softened. I'm going to leave the rendering settings on default. On the wet mix menu I'm setting the charge at 23% and the pull at 85%. I'm going to leave the colour dynamics menu on all of their default settings. On the dynamics menu I'm going to set the jitter size to 23% and the opacity to 53%. Next I'm going to head to the Apple Pencil menu. First I'm going to increase the pressure slider to max. This creates a more intense variation in pressure with my brush. I want this ink brush to be very opaque, so I'm going to slide the opacity down to none. This means that my brush will be opaque regardless of the amount of pressure applied. I'm increasing the bleed to 15% for a more textured looking edge. For the tilt settings, I'm going to increase the opacity to max and the gradation to 46%. I'm also increasing the bleed to 45% and the size to 51%. I'm then going to move on to the brush properties menu. Here I'm going to adjust the preview and the smudge size and I'm going to lower the maximum size of the brush to create a thinner line art style brush. On the right of the screen you can see me testing the brush with varying pressure. On the About This Brush menu you can name your brushes by clicking on Untitled Brush at the top and renaming them using the keyboard. One of my favourite ways to use ink brushes is for textured colouring. I really like how the grain still shows through. You can also use these brushes to create textured line art and you can increase the streamline setting as we did with the first brush to assist with this. Even when I'm zoomed quite far out on the canvas, you can still see the texture peeking through. If an area is feeling too textured for your liking, you can simply colour over the top of it and this will decrease the amount of grain. Here is the final result of adding flat colours using the ink brush. When I zoom in, you can really see that grain that is left behind. Next we're going to look at how to make a watercolour brush. As with before, we're going to start in the shape menu and head to the source library. I'm going to select a very loose and watery looking shape. Once that's selected, I can hit done and head to the grain menu. Once again, I want to import a texture from the Envato Elements library. This time, I'm going to search for a watercolour texture.
I looked for an image with a lot of colour and texture so that the shapes would really stand out in the grain. Once I found the image, as with the others, I can hit download and then import it into my grain editor. Yet again, I'm going to hit auto repeat to make this into a seamless repeat pattern. I was happy with all of those settings, so I left it as it was. Now I can head back to the stroke path section of the menu to begin editing the brush. I set the spacing to 6% and then I set the jitter to 10%. Next I head on to the stabilisation menu which I'm going to leave on its default settings. In the taper menu I'm going to slide the pressure down to none. I'm then going to leave the rest of these settings at their default levels. In the shape menu I'm going to leave these first settings at default levels and I'm going to set the randomised switch to on. You can see the difference this makes to the grain of the brush when I turn it to on and off. I'm then going to leave the rest of these settings as default. In the grain menu, I'm first going to set the movement to 58%. Next, I'm going to set the scale to 59%. And then I'm going to set the rotation to minus 100%. I'm going to leave the rest of the settings on this menu at the default levels. Next, I'm going to switch to the rendering menu where I'm going to select light glaze for a more diluted effect. Next I'm heading to the wet mix menu. First I'm going to disable the charge setting. I'm also going to slightly increase the pool setting. I'm going to leave the colour dynamic settings as they are. For this brush I'm also going to leave the dynamics on their default. On the Apple Pencil menu, I'm going to increase the size to 37% and I'm going to increase the opacity to low, but the flow to maximum. This makes the brush really easy to layer, which is exactly what we want with a watercolour style brush. You can see me testing this out on the drawing pad on the right. The lighter amount of pressure applied, the more transparent the brush strokes will appear on the canvas. I'm also going to add a very slight bleed by setting it to 6%. I'm then going to scroll to the bottom settings and set the gradation to max. I'm then going to set the bleed setting to 11% and the size setting to 34%. Then I'm going to move on to the properties section. I'm going to set the smudge to 70% and then I'm going to set the maximum size to max. I want this brush to be able to get quite large because sometimes I might want to use it for colouring in backgrounds. You can see on the drawing pad how layerable this brush is. I'm also setting a minimum size for this brush at 1%. And that is my watercolour brush complete. In my own artwork, I like to use watercolour brushes to add texture. If you're interested in learning how I created this particular illustration, check out the description of this video for a link to the tutorial on the Envato Tuts Plus website. I'm going to be using my watercolour brush to add a textured background to this illustration. Because this brush is very buildable, I'm starting off very lightly around the edges and then I'm slowly layering it from the inside out. I want the darkest colour to be towards the centre of the drawing and for it to fade out gently towards the edges. The great thing about this brush is that it's not only very buildable but it's also very blendable. When I zoom in you can see the subtle textured look that this brush leaves on the canvas. In this next section of the course we're going to be looking at stamp brushes. A stamp brush is a brush with a specific shape that requires no drawing or dragging to form a design. Think of it like a real life stamp but in a digital form. The designs are usually ready to leave as they are, or if you prefer you can use them as outlines and colour them in. These brushes can save you a lot of time, especially with more complex designs or repeated patterns. You can also make your own stamp brushes, which is what we're going to be exploring in the next part of this course. 
we're going to begin by looking at how to make a pixel brush. Before we create the brush, we're going to head to the Add section of the Actions panel and copy the canvas. You'll see why we do that in a moment. I'm going to head to the Shape section and hit the Edit button. From here, I'm going to press Import and then press Paste. This will paste in the square shape that we just copied from the canvas, changing the shape of a brush from a circle to a square. When doing this, you want to make sure that your canvas is white. I'm going to head to the straight path menu and set the spacing to none. On the stabilization menu, I'm going to leave the default settings. And on the taper menu, I'm going to set the size to max, the opacity to max, and the pressure down to none. On the touch taper menu, I'm going to set the size and the opacity up to max. Then I'm going to head on over to the shape menu. I'm going to leave all of these settings on their default. On the grain menu, I'm going to leave all of these settings as they were. I'm also going to leave the rendering settings as default. On the wet mix menu, I'm going to decrease the pull and completely disable the charge slider. I'm going to leave the color dynamics and dynamics menus at their default settings. Next, I'm going to head to the Apple Pencil menu. Here, I'm going to lower the opacity to none to create a completely opaque brush. You can see on the drawing pad that the brush we've created so far is making singular square shapes. On the Properties menu, I'm going to lower the smudge setting and set the maximum size of the brush to none. This is going to look very small on larger canvas sizes, but I'll show you now how I size it up. For this demonstration, I'm going to create a simple pixel heart shape to add on to her top. I'm going to start by adding a symmetry drawing guide so I can make sure that the shape is even on both sides. I've then zoomed right in so that I can see exactly what I'm creating. When I zoom out, this is going to look really tiny. But the great thing about pixel brushes is that they can be sized up as much as you like and the quality won't be affected. I'm going to use the selection tool to size up this brush and you can see exactly what I mean. As soon as I let go of the selection, the edges clear up. This makes the pixel brush a great option if you're going to need to drastically resize your work. I'm now using the distort tool to change the angle of the heart and then playing around with the final placement. And here is the finished result. The next brush we're going to make is a star stamp brush. First, I'm going to head to the shape menu and press edit. I'm then going to hit import and press the source library. I'm going to click on the search bar and type in star and then select that shape. This will form the basis of our stamp. If you'd like, you could also draw your own star. I'm going to increase the straight path spacing to max and then I'm going to leave the stabilization and taper settings all on their default. I'm also not going to touch anything in the shape settings menu. The great thing about stamp brushes like these is that they're really simple to make. I'm not going to add a grain to this brush and again, I'm going to leave all of these settings on their default. I'm also going to ignore the rendering menu settings, the wet mix menu settings, the color dynamics menu settings and the dynamics menu settings. On the Apple Pencil menu, I'm going to slide the opacity down to none. I'm going to leave the rest of these settings as they are on default. On the Properties menu, I'm going to increase the preview size and set the smudge size down to none. On the Brush Behaviour section, I'm going to set the maximum size to max so that I have full freedom with the size of my stamps. I really like to use star brushes in the background of my illustrations, so I've set the brush to a white colour and I'm just dotting it around the background of the page. I like to use a variety of size of star, so I'm using the brush size slider on the left side of the screen to achieve this. This gives a much more realistic look to the drawing because if you look up at the night sky, you'll notice that the stars are all different sizes.
The drawing is now complete. Using this stamp brush saved me so much time compared to drawing all of these individually with a normal brush. The next stamp brush we're going to make is a flower brush. For this brush I'm going to import my own image so I'm starting off by using my ink brush to draw this flower shape. At the moment I'm really into simple retro looking flowers so I'm going for that kind of look with my brush. I'm going to be colouring it in with this inky brush as well which is going to give me that grainy texture and the brush will keep this texture after it's created. Once I've finished drawing my flower, I need to set the colour to white. Then I can remove the background layer and copy the image. Because all of the settings are going to be the same, I can cheat a little here and duplicate a previous stamp brush and use that as a template. All I need to do is head to the shape editor and press import and then paste to add my flower shape. It's as easy as that and my brush is now ready to go. I'm going to use this brush to add some background details to a previously created illustration. This is a really easy way to elevate your drawings and make them a lot more interesting. I'm using the brush size slider tool to make a variety of different flower sizes. My funky floral background is now complete. If I zoom in, you can see that the texture of the ink brush has been preserved within the stamp. For the final lesson of this course, we're going to look at how to make a tree brush. I'm going to begin by using the chalk brush that I created earlier to roughly sketch out a tree shape. We're going for more of a tree outline slash shadow kind of look with this brush, so it doesn't matter how neat or perfect this is as long as it resembles the outline of a tree. Once I've finished drawing the shape, I'm going to set the colour to white. I'm going to make sure the background is turned off and I'm going to copy the layer. As with the previous brush, I can simply duplicate this to replicate the settings and then all I need to do is paste that into the shape. And just like that, my tree brush is ready to go. For this illustration, I'm going to create a tree line background. I'm going to start with the darkest colour that I'm going to use and the largest size of brush that I'm going to use at the front. I can vary this size slightly just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Then I'm going to create a new layer behind this layer and I'm going to select a lighter version of that previous colour and decrease the brush size. I'm then going to dot a line of trees behind this original layer. I also like to vary the heights of these trees slightly. I'm then going to create another layer behind this layer and once again make the colour lighter and the brush smaller. I can then repeat this process for however far back I want the tree line to go within the background. And here is my finished tree background illustration. You can see just by looking at how many trees are in this picture quite how much time it saved me by having this stamp brush. Let's recap what we've learnt in this course. How to download and install Procreate brushes. How to create traditional brushes in Procreate. Looking at chalk, ink and watercolour. How to create stamp brushes in Procreate. Looking at pixel, star, flower and tree. Don't forget to check out the Envato Elements Library for a wide selection of resources, including beautiful textures like these and the ones that we used in this video, a wide selection of creative fonts to suit all of your design needs, and a library of Procreate and Photoshop brushes and stamps. Subscribe now with the link in our bio. Thank you so much for following along on this course with me. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and have fun expanding your Procreate brush library. If you found it useful, don't forget to give this video a like and check out our channel and subscribe for more videos like this one.